Well, hi, and welcome to Bible Study with Friends, where our goal is to help you get more impact from your Bible study. Today, we're going to be studying Psalm 3 in a way that you perhaps have never studied a psalm before. And we're going to use part of what we talked about last week of things that are unique to the entire book of Psalms. And we're going to see some blessings in Psalm 3 that if we're doing a Bible study, these observations will take us into deeper and deeper Bible study, what I call chasing after a vein of gold as we study. Now, this is a rebroadcast of a series I did many years ago in a Bible Institute. I have edited it down so that it is a little bit better length for us to consume. I haven't edited in any of the content out. In fact, there is a 109-page workbook called Digging for Gold in God's Word that you can get for free and follow along. Just use the link in the description below, and it's absolutely free. You can get it and use it to follow along as we go through these treasures in Psalm 3. And let's get right into it. We're going to follow some unique observations in Psalm 3 when we come right back. On page 52, the pronouns. You're asking your questions, who, what, when, where, why? One of the questions is who? And one of the big questions in Psalms is who is talking to whom? Okay? Because Psalms goes all over the place, and I'll show you what I mean. When we start reading Psalm 1, Psalm 3, verse 1, O oh Lord, how my adversaries have increased. Who am I speaking to? Who is David speaking to? He's speaking to God. So this is a prayer to God, right? So you keep going. In verse 2, he says, Many are saying of my soul, there is no deliverance for him in God. So he's still talking to God. But you, O oh Lord, are a shield about me. Who is he talking to? To God. This is still a prayer. But you, O Lord, are a shield about me. Verse 4. Do you see the shift? He is no longer praying. Don't read this psalm like it's straight through to delivering a prayer. It, a lot of psalms, a lot of psalms move in and out of prayer. And here's what's going on. The priest is praying. For David. David, the priest is representing David. All oh, my adversaries have increased. Many are saying there's no deliverance. But you, O Lord, are a shield about me, my glory and the one who lifts my head. And then he turns around to the people and says, I was crying to the Lord with my voice, and he heard me from his holy mountain. I lay down and slept. I woke, for the Lord sustains me. I will not be afraid of 10,000 people who have set themselves against me round about. Turn around back. Arise, O oh Lord. Do you see what's happening? Do you see the movement of the worship services praying? But then I want to explain some things to the audience. I want you, the reader, the audience, to get a point. So I'm praying and turning. And it's very funny because in the same verse, it can switch in Psalms if, you're, if you watch. And what you need to do is watch the pronouns. Watch the pronouns, because if I say, but you, O Lord, who am I talking to? I'm talking to the Lord. But if I was talking to the Lord in verse 4, how would it read? So I'm not talking to the Lord anymore. If I was, I would, it would read different. I'm now talking to you about the Lord. Now, sometimes David talks to himself. I said to my soul, old soul. Other times he talks to his enemies. You will experience the wrath of God. Other times he talks to the congregation. Our God is great. I did this to the Lord. I spoke to the Lord. I slept. I did it. See what I'm saying? Watch the pronouns closely because it gives you a feel 
of the worship service of what's going on. Now, sometimes it is not a prayer. It's strictly a lecture. The priest is up at the front, and he addresses the people all the way through. Other psalms, the people are never addressed. It's all a prayer. Other psalms, many of them, it's back and forth. And if you start to watch the pronouns and watch who's talking to whom, it really starts to get a feel of the movement of the psalm. And it, you really watch it when you're reading psalms. It, no other book does that. No other verse will bounce back and forth. Some of the other things you can tell God's being addressed because it says he is almighty or you are almighty. But Psalms in this worship service context, gets you get this feeling of the priest. Now, if I'm going to say, I'm going to be the priest today, okay? So I'm going to do the reading of, this is my prayer to the Lord. I'm, all my adversaries have surrounded me. Many are saying there's no hope. There's no deliverance for me. And, but you, oh Lord, that's my prayer. But other times, I want to be the audience, and I want to listen to David pray, and then David turns to me with the explanation, I was crying out to the Lord with my voice, and he answered me from his holy mountain. I lay down and slept. I awoke. So watch the pronouns. The other thing to watch are the tenses. Don't be tense, I wrote down here at the top of page 53. Don't be tense, but check the verb tenses. Because there's a huge blessing sometimes in he's talking about past tense, and then he talks about something that is absolutely now. So, for example, he starts out, my adversaries have increased. Many are saying of my soul, there is no deliverance for him and God. That's present tense, correct? They are saying that right now. He says, but you, O Lord, are a shield to me. Right now, he's not praying, you will be a shield to me when I get delivered. He's in the middle of the trip. He is running for his life. And yet, in the midst of that, he sits down the baggage and he says, running for my life, the one thing I absolutely know is right this minute, God is a shield for me. Not going to be a shield. You see where that can take you? Place. Just by paying attention to the circumstances, but what he's saying and when he says, then he says, I lay down and I slept, past tense. I awoke, past tense, because the Lord sustains me, present. That's that. He continues. I laid down in the midst of this deal. I had peace. I could lay down. I could sleep. And I knew I was going to awake because he not only sustained me back then, but he sustains me now and continues to sustain me. That can take you places if you if you go there and say, boy, does that apply to me and my trouble right this minute? Yeah, we have a tendency to say, oh, he'll make it better later. He'll deliver me later. He no, in the midst of the trial, I don't have a clue how this is going to turn out. I don't have a clue if Absalom is going to win. All I know for sure is that right this minute, God sustains me. That makes sense what we're doing? He goes, and then in verse 6, he says, I will not be afraid of 10,000 people. So he sustains me now. I've had this experience in the past. I'm having this experience in the now. He sustains me in the now. Therefore, based upon him sustaining me in the now, no matter what happens in the future, I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people, including my own son, who have set themselves against me roundabout. So watching the tenses of the verbs can take you deep. Okay? That makes sense? What you're doing? Just by what's the tense? Now I was a terrible English student. And I don't know about future participles and, and all that stuff. That's why I use a dictionary and a Bible handbook will tell me some of that stuff. Oh, that word is the present, future, past tense. I go, okay, fine. I just write it down. Then I sound really smart, but I'm not. But the notes take me there and I write it in there. It's a continuous action. He continuously upholds me. Wonderful. Arise, O Lord, save me now. 
Save me, O my God. For you have smitten all my enemies. You have shattered the teeth of the wicked. Then I stop. That's, the prayer is over. And I turn in verse 8. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Am I still praying? No. If I was praying, what would I read? Salvation belongs to you. So I've stopped in there. I've said, you have sh shattered the teeth of the wicked. The priest says, you have shattered the teeth of the wicked. No, I got a thought. I need to tell the people something. I turn to the people and say, hey, salvation, deliverance belongs to the Lord. It's his. Then I go back to look what it said. Your blessings be upon your people. See the movement? You start to get a feeling of that. Pray. Tell the people what's going on. Pray. Comment to the people. Back to prayer. It's very dynamic. It's a worship service. It's really designed to be that, where pastor is praying, and then all of a sudden he comes down, and he's, the Lord is my deliverer. He can deliver us from anything. Do you believe that, folk? Uh, you're a mighty God. You're a God of grace. Do you get grace? You see, he's moving back, and that's what's happening in Psalms. It happens in Psalms a lot. So when you're digging for treasure, it really brings Psalm alive, if you keep those in mind. The pronouns, the verb tenses. Now, oh, some word studies. I'm going to jump to. I'm going to jump to the next page here. Nuggets and veins, page fifty-four, verse three. I was skimming along, minding my own business, reading Psalm three, one day, and it said, "But you, O Lord, are a shield about me." I went, oh, that is so cool. He's a shield about me. And I pictured the shield, a Roman shield, this big honking shield, right? But I went, oh, that's interesting. I went to my concordance and I discovered that in the book of Psalms, there are two different numbers for the word shield. That's interesting. So I looked them up and here's what I found. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you there. It's on, it's, if you go to the next page, 55, and I wrote it, I went to page 55. Now, in my Bible, in the notes, let me go back here. It'll say something like, see what I wrote on my treasure map? See page 1011. I didn't have room here. So I say, see page 1011. If you come to, in my Bible, if you come to the word loving kindness through the whole Old Testament, it'll say loving kindness. I wrote it in pink and there's a little pink heart. And then it says page 30. And if you go to page 30 in my Bible, I got all kinds of notes about what loving kindness means. Okay, so here it says page 1011. So you flip to page 1011. After the book of Psalms, I just happened to have some white space. So down here, I did a Bible study on shield. There's two words for shield, Megan and Sinna. T-S-I-N-A-H. Megan and Sinna in Hebrew. Megan is a small shield, an offensive and defensive shield. It's what the old English used as buckler. And what buckler was, what, a sh what this shield is, Megan, is it was a shield that was attached to the arm. A lot of shields you hold on to, and if you let go, the shield drops. But this is a shield that's attached to the armor. You, you can't get, let it go. He's a shield that you can't let go. Okay, maybe. It's a small offensive and defensive shield. It's about 18 inches around. It's got a sharp edge. One edge is sharp like a knife. And it's meant that you can parry and then slice with the shield. It was defensive and offensive. Sometimes they had a point. The top would be a shield and then it would come down and it would come to a point and you could stab with the point. It was meant to be offensive and defensive. Now, the other word is sinna. That means a large honkin. Honkin is Hebrew. A honkin shield. It basically means portable fort. The Hebrew word means a covering protective wall. It means, it also means a piercing cold, which is a kind of a weird thing, but that's what it means. It's a covering thing. Like when you're covered with cold, it, this shield covers you completely. Megan and Sinna, which word do you think 
the word shield in Psalm 3 when he says, you are a shield about me. What would you think? Okay, I would read that and think he's a big shield I hide behind. He is completely around me, big shield. That's not the Hebrew word. The Hebrew word is Megan. So what does it say when he, he's a shield around me? What it means is he is in a whirlwind of action around me, protecting and offending. Defending and offending. Oh, anyway, he's protecting me, but he's also attacking for me. He's all over the place around me. He does not want me to be cringing behind him. He wants me to be out in the battle using him as my defense and offense. Interesting. So I went to my concordance and some other tools, and I wrote down. Here are every psalm that has the word Megan. 3, 7, 10, 18, 2. And it's cool because you can do a Bible study of just the Lord is my shield and just go through every single one of those psalms. And it's a great little Bible study on how the Lord is my offense and defense. He's there to protect me, but he's also there to help me in an offensive way. And it's interesting, in the whole book of Psalms, there's only three places that use the word sinna as a big fork to hide behind. Only three Psalms. All the rest of them is he is a defense and an offense. And it, we would think the opposite. We want him to be a place we hide behind him. And he's saying, no, hey, we want you out. New Testament, the doors of hell will not prevail against the church. The church isn't supposed to be hiding behind something. The church is supposed to be on the offense. And we want God to be, we hide behind him. He, no. Yeah, I'll take care of you defensively, but I also want to take care of you offensively. I don't want you on the attack. Now, interesting. Somebody turn to Psalm 35, 2. We're running out of time here, covering a lot of stuff. Psalm 35, 2. This has both words in it. There's, in that Psalm, it uses both those Hebrew words. He is my shield to hide behind, and he is my buckler to defend and be helping in the offense. So you could go off and do, I did another little word, 2 Chronicles 14.8 is another place where they're both mentioned. And I go off on that and say, okay, Lord, how often do I want to hide behind you and not do anything when you really want me to press on using you as a shield and an offensive tool? See, I can I could go places there. David is saying, he isn't for me to hide behind. He defends me and is for me to use offensively. Now, David is saying that knowing that he has been in the wrong. He knows he screwed up. And yet he still says, I know God's going to save me. I know he's good because he is my Lord. I am reliant upon him. The three shout outs in verse 55 I've got there. I told you about the word salvation. By the word, by the way, in your notes, where under page, under in the middle of page fifty-five, where it says verse two or verse eight, and I say Lord in question in comma, it should be salvation in comma, not Lord. Yeshua is the word for salvation or deliverance. That's a misprint. Page fifty-five, right in the middle of page fifty-five, says Lord in quotes Yeshua. And it should say salvation in quotes, Yeshua. The word Lord in this Psalm is Yahweh, is Jehovah, but the word salvation is Yeshua, Joshua. Jesus is my salvation, Yeshua. Three shout outs to the Lord. O Lord is my prayer, but you, O Lord, is my power. Arise, O Lord, is my protector. That just, just went there. So that's my observations. In my relationship with God, do I come to him as my prayer? Do I come to him as my power? And do I come to him as my sustaining protector? You can do cross-references, and I gave you some cross-references there to shield. You get a feel for 
Psalm 3. Now, you will have friends who say Psalm 3. It's eight verses. Okay, that takes five minutes. You could spend a month. I promise you, you could. I could teach a series of Bible studies in Psalm 3 that would take us, I could probably do 10 weeks. I could probably do 10 hours in Psalm 3. Really could. Just by digging. Now, don't get frustrated that you don't do that the first time you do it. If God gives you a nugget, enjoy the nugget. If he gives you some deposits around the nugget, if he takes you on a one vein, and you say, well, I could go off on this rabbit trail of shield, but I'll do that later. So I'll just make a note. Study shield later. Okay, fine. Study it later. There's no hurry. you got years to make these kind of notes. Okay? Any questions about Psalm? Psalm 3 or what I was talking about in the book of Psalms? Psalms. Good. Oh, man, I'm a great teacher. They don't have any questions at all. Brilliant. Next week, we're going to spend in one verse. Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And here's the assignment. I want you to take Romans chapter 12, verse 2, and I want you to write one sentence, no more than two sentences, on what every single word means. Now, if you say, I've never been able to memorize a verse, this is a way to memorize a verse. It's also a way to dig deep into a verse and don't use any other tools except your Webster's dictionary. Don't use any other tools. If it says for, what does for mean? And don't just write what the dictionary says. Write, write a sentence of what it means in the context of this verse. We're going to go really deep in Romans chapter 12, verse 2 next week in your manual. Use only Merriam-Webster's dictionary. And you could take a piece of paper. We're not going to collect it. But what I did for myself on this, you can't put it in your Bible because it's, I don't know how many words there are, but there's 25 words and you're writing 25 sentences. But you, you can write a great blog, by the way, about what Romans 12, 2 means to you. But take a piece of paper and just write each word. In fact, in your manual, if you look on page 58, now, if you're using a different version, it won't match, but I put the New American Standard words for you, and do not be confirmed. So I want a sentence on what does the word be mean, okay? We're going to be blessed by Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Let's close in prayer. Father, I praise you and thank you for this the time we've had. Thank you that... They've paid so much attention to what we've been doing. And Father, for each person in this room, thank you that you're blessing them. Thank you that you're using some of my stupidity to do that. And Lord, we just praise you that it has so much for us and that we get a chance to get a glimpse of the riches that are there for us in your word, in your book of Psalm, in, in your entire scripture. We just thank you so much for that. And pray that you would continue to bless now as we go and do our homework and as we go into the Word during the week, that you would bless our time in the Word. We pray in Christ's name. Amen.